Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. Hi, everybody. Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and I seem to do this a lot, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to apologize beforehand. And I, and I want to share with everybody something. I'm reading an article. I'm not going to cite the source because I don't want to undermine. I hate when people go to my stuff and start using it as a, a tool or you know a blog entry to kind of promote their own stuff. I don't want to be that guy. But in this article, it basically says, you know, Gallup has reported that actively disengaged employees have increased uh, to 18% in 2022. And so when you sit here, create a culture that cares and, you know, train your leaders and all that good stuff. Um, you know, the another they cited another source, a great source, the Conference Board Employment Trends Index says 58% of employees say they're likely to leave their company without professional development opportunities. And so we talk about quiet quitting. And, you know, basically it's it says in this article that employees feel overworked, undervalued, and stunted by limited career th- career opportunities. Let me just add further context to this. I'm sorry, but it's bullshit. Here's why. We don't hire people for negative attitudes. We don't hire people to lack motivation. We don't hire people to be poor teammates, yet we as leaders get that. So when we interview people, we tend to have this fallacy. Well, tell me about yourself. Tell me why you're the right person for this job. What we should be asking is, are you going to exhibit negative tendencies? And if you do, can we terminate you right away? Now, (laughs) my, my friends in the HR field are probably cringing right now. We have to be very conscientious as organizations that we do not take on a role of responsibility where we don't have full traction. I cannot go up to one of my employees and say, Stephanie, I want you to become the vice president of sales. I can't tell her what to do. Yet the stu- the studies that are coming out and the way people are looking at this today is what leaders need to do. Employees are in charge of their own careers. Organizations provide employment. They provide training specific to the job. And if they su- choose to, they can provide opportunities for career development and advancement and exploration. But at the end of the day, The organization is not in charge of employees and their decisions. We are in charge of providing opportunities. Yet so much of this quiet quitting is just such a load of crap. Here's why. It's been around for decades. It's people who choose not to do their jobs. Quiet quitting is people who do the bare minimum. And I'm sorry, almost two out of every 10 people at the company are actively disengaged, meaning they're negative then let's just can them. Why are organizations putting up with that, yet they have the responsibility of what? Making sure people feel valued and challenged and all those good things that we should be doing. Yet I don't hear people writing or talking about the employee responsibility. Change is good, and we need to start teaching people change is good. Now, I'm going to share this with you. My wife, after 26 years is leaving her employer. I'm not going to mention the company by name. And it's been a bumpy road towards the end. And that's okay. And then when all of her partners started to leave this medical practice and went to this other organization where she's now soon to go, she learned something valuable. And I looked at her and I said, isn't this great? And she goes, oh, I hate this. And she she wanted to leave. And I said, but you learned something valuable. People change, businesses change. You are in charge of your career. So when she started to look for a job opportunity, 
You know, my wife is not someone who seeks change, but all of a sudden she got a huge increase in pay. Happiness, the way they conduct things. Yes, employees need to look. Yet, but my wife's employer couldn't say, you're not leaving. So we have to be very conscientious, very specific of our roles and responsibility. So when I read this article, train your leaders, prioritize professional development, create a culture that cares. I'm sorry, but employees have to have expectations. You were hired to do a job, do it. There isn't a job description in the world, please excuse my language, that says rant, rave, and bitch about the way things are going. And if you have a strong opinion on upper level management, by all means, get yourself to the nearest water cooler and share it. It's all bullshit. Now look, I want my people to feel challenged and I want them to feel like they can always look for opportunities inside and outside the company. But I will not be responsible for their decision. My job is to provide them a place where they feel like they want to stay. And if they don't, that's okay. Now, if I choose to not care and not provide those opportunities, certainly that'll come at the expense of the organization. Yet we're putting so much on leaders today. Yet leaders today are dealing with lack of motivation, lack of attitude, you know, people's ability to uh, go above and beyond the call of duty, quiet quitting. What about people just doing their jobs without a negative attitude? 20% of people in the workforce, according to Gallup, possess that attitude. Another major percentage are just active or are just neutrally engaged, meaning they're doing their job, nothing more. What happened to coming in early, staying late and saying, oh, but by the way, in between those hours, can I help you? Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called Coach to You, where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign seven to 21 day programs for employees to learn and, more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called Coach to you. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.